Welcome to Chewing the Cud. Bouncing back into your lives like a tigger filled with sugar, bringing you a soup son of showbiz, a tantalizing taste of the internet, and not forgetting a life lesson. And believe me, I've tried to forget them. But before we lick our fingers and flip the page, let's talk to the man whose digits are always moist. It's Lee. And smelly. Oh, um, what do you think you smell of? Loveliness, Mike. Lovely things. <laughs> A tigger filled with sugar? Does this mean you'll be bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun? Well, we shall see how that works for a change. I'm back with some exciting showbiz news, including an update on something that has five members. And I've got some updates from the internet with a tip, top, top tip on how to live longer. You can still scroll through our inner thoughts. Why not just search for them at the Cud TV on your social media? Not forgetting our website is the Cud.tv. And if you want to listen to us, have a little search for Chewing the Cud on our podcast service or watch us on YouTube, where you can also subscribe so you don't miss a moment. Mike is the very model of a very modern megastar. He's charming and he's erudite. His talent reaches very far. He writes the scripts we read each week that makes us laugh and makes us cry and makes us chuckle, groan and quake and titter, chort or smile and sigh. He's very well acquainted too with matters very practical, with information sharing, both dogmatic and didactical. He brings us stories every week in a segment that we call The Buzz, with many cheerful facts that we ponder and at length discussed. With many cheerful facts that we ponder and at length discuss. With many cheerful facts that we ponder and at length discuss. With many, many cheerful, cheerful facts, facts that, that we ponder, ponder and, and at length, length at length discuss. discuss. He's very good at interviews. In fact, I'd say that he excels. He works so hard you'd think he's powered by a dozen Duracells. In short, no other man is close to being even slightly similar. Mike is the very model of a very modern megastar. I am the very model of a very modern megastar. He's a very model of a very modern megastar. <laughs> he is. I am a very, very model, model of a, a very, very modern, modern megastar. megastar. <laughs> you know, a kinder colleague in this land, I wager that you'd never find. And he's so smart, they asked him to become the host of Mastermind. He's banned from all the talent shows to give the others half a chance, from BGT to Strictly, where they're scared that he will steal the dance. He's written songs for Take That, for Madonna, and for Elton John and Steps, and Whitney, Prince and Queen, and Abba, and Marillion. Will his capacity for entertaining ever be surpassed? Will there ever be a bigger or more awestruck Mike enthusiast? Will there ever be a bigger or more awestruck Mike enthusiast? Will there ever be a bigger or more awestruck Mike enthusiast? Will, Will there, there ever be, be a bigger, bigger or more awestruck, more awestruck Mike, Mike, a Mike, Mike enthusiast? enthusiast? And on that slip into the surreal, I need to ask, who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? You fat We are in some form of sports ball arena, but we can play our... Game of the Week. The producer can't be with us today, following a phone call saying he's been involved in an accident that wasn't his fault. After a lengthy conversation, he concluded that he had been in an accident that wasn't his fault. It was down to the undercooked takeaway he had the night before, and while it left a mess in his trousers, he couldn't quite make a claim for it. What a dick. So while the producer hoses himself down, it's time to play a game. This is a game for Lee to play, so you need to foxtrot Oscar to our performance booth. So this segment allows us to enjoy a much more highbrow interlude, where we showcase Lee's acting talents. You may not know that Lee is a classically trained theatrical actor and recently had a small part in Two Gentlemen of Verona. But enough about his post-lockdown shenanigans. This week we are playing the Gobby Game Show. Lee will deliver some of his best impressions, and all I have to do is guess who he is portraying. Are you ready, Lee? Ready. Oh, that's, that's Lee from Chewing the Cud. Do I get a point for that? Not started. Ah. Uh. First one is a person. Person. Yeah. Right. Um, are there all people? It's a person. Chandler. I want to clean the house. I need some food, Chandler. 
That's nothing like her that I can't remember. Uh, Is it Courtney Cox? Yeah! Well, that's the character called. Monica. Yes. Monica Hing. What? Hing. Monica Hing. Okay. Right. Hello. Oh, no. Oh, Bing. I thought yeah. you kept saying ring, ring. Yeah. Okay. I'm like a gala. Oh, she was ring because she got married. Yeah. Don't tell me. <laughs> okay. Next person. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool, aren't you? I used to like that. Now I'm really thin. Cool. I sing songs. Can't remember a single song. Hello from the other side. Michelle McManus. No. Yeah. Kind of, but not. Kind of Michelle McManus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool, aren't you? Cockney Sarah. Singing girl. Yeah. Uh, Amy Winehouse. No, oh. she's dead. This one's alive. Right, okay, I didn't yeah. know that. You didn't tell me that. So, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. so alive. Yeah, I, so I like her. Anyway. I can't remember any other songs that she sings. A heart song. Hala, holly, holly, side. Shirley Bassey. No. Oh, no, 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 oh, 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 that's Adele. Yes. Uncanny. Yeah. I don't know what song you were trying to sing last time, but I it was Adele. Casey Hayden's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, next person. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh... uh... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do that. That's Lee. <laughs> uh... Uh, in your speedos. I just go swinging. Uh, just gonna jump off the dining yard. Uh, slash. Okay, Ian, now. Prince Andrew. No. 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 Uh, I'm a gay. Oh, I'm a gay. Graham Norton. No. Swimming gay. Swimming gay. S swimming gay. Dying gay. Oh. Dunking in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what in the water? Dunking in the water. Uh, Doing what in the water? Flash. 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 Married to some American dude. Uh. Um. Oh, he doesn't sing. Uh, no, no. I don't know. Uh, Tom Daly. Who? Tom Daly. Who? Tom Daly! <laughs> Tom Daly. Okay. Oh, Tom Daly. Yeah. All right. Next one. Uh huh. Okay. Ha ha, don't treat. I ain't trolly. This person's an icon. If she is. She is indeed. Yeah. Um, it's Ozzy Osbourne's daughter. What's her name? Huh? She did that song, Papa Don't Preach. I'm in trouble. No, it's not there. The original. Uh, the original, Cindy Lauper. No. Um, Britney. Uh, ah, I'm, no, I don't know what she says. Cher? Yeah? I can't, uh, uh, I'm in the laugh. Whitney Houston. <laughs> no. Dark. But no. Uh, uh, lots of faces. New face, old face, new face, old face. Stitch it up. Let's have another one. Ariana Stark from Game of Thrones. No, she's a singer. Oh. She has many, many children. Many, many children? Yeah. Well, her own truly doesn't sing. And some that she's adopted. Like a virgin. That's the way has done. Oh, Madonna. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Never sing that song ever again. <laughs> <sighs> okay, um... She's dead. Our character's not dead, but she's dead. The actress. Uh, the actress is dead, but the character isn't. Isn't, no. And she has, um... How does... Sorry, sorry how does an actor be dead and still play a character that's alive? CGI. Right. All right. So, uh, Danish hasties either side of the head. Right. Da, 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 da. Um, uh, what was that? Zhong. Did she do Zhong Zhong? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't Did remember. she do Zhong Zhong? That she is one zhing. of the questions that out, out, out there in life. Uh, oh, Luke. I want to get in your hands. 
Did you just say you want to get in my pants? Luke! I'm looking at you. I don't want you to get in my pants, though. Hey, the horse. She doesn't say that. I don't know what she says. Help me, only young canoe. Oh, Princess Leia. Yeah. She, do she does talk about the force, and she does have a lightsaber. Does she? Oh, that's good. Uh, she's is that it? Is that the end? That's, that's a lot. Okay. I've never been so thankful in my life. <laughs> Still to come, we have our life lesson. And just after this break, it's Lee with the Showbiz News. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. This folly is jolly. Bend me over backwards on the hostess trolley. Let's do it. Let's have the showbiz news with Lee. You just quote a bit of Victoria Wood there. I did indeed. How homosexual of you. Oh, that's a surprise, isn't it? It is, <laughs> isn't it? Who would have it? Who would have known? Mm. Shall we have a bit of showbiz news? Just a little bit. A little tiny bit. And then just a little bit more. And then, oh, okay. Ooh, ah. Oh, right. Yes. Spice Girls news. Keeping it current. Keeping Spice it current. Girls? Yeah. I ask you to stop right now. Thank you very much. Oh, dear. Has anybody got a gun? <laughs> no. Um, right. So, now, now that the pandemic is kind of on its way out. So far. So far, fingers crossed. You know. The, the Spice Girls are planning to tour again. Again? Ooh. Has it only been... It's only been seven thousand years. Day, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So they, so they're gonna they're gonna tell her again. Unlikely that Posh is gonna join them because she doesn't need the money. She doesn't need the money. However, the the word on the street, the word on the street, okay, with the kids is that they are going to have Spice World Two. They're gonna film Spice World Two. Chop. Do not excite me. It is gonna happen. Uh, we've got this is a this is the poster of the original Spice Girls movie. I watched the original movie Did when you? it came out. Did you? Yeah. I went to see it on Boxing Day with my mum. Gay child. <laughs> I went to see it on my own. Oh no! Right, because uh, we're Christmasing in Butlins. Okay. Because it came out on on Boxing Day. Did when you went and said, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to," did they go like one homosexual to see uh, Spice Girls movie? <laughs> <laughs> No, because I was small. You were small. I was small. Um, well, the original film mm -hmm. came out in 1997, had all of them in. It's, it's awful, but it's so awful it's good. It is a classic camp. It is. It's, 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 it's a carry-on movie with the Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the rumours are that they're going to be kind of doing an updated version of, of Spice World 2. Well, it will be an updated vision. It will be Spice World 2, the sequel. Okay. Slightly concerned by that, because in Spice World 1, don't they steal the bus? They do. What? I'm just thinking a lot of the world has changed since 1997. So now stealing a bus isn't just, oh, uh, having a bit of a jape stealing a bus. Oh, I thought you were going to make like an, like an offensive age-related joke and say, is it going to be like an old age pensioners? No, no, no. Um, I was more concerned about them sort of like being stopped by security services because they're stealing oh, the bus. Oh, okay. Well, who, who knows? It received horrendous reviews from the critics when it was released. But we didn't care. It was awful. Because we, we loved the Spice Girls. Well, it knew it was awful. Um, we've, we've, got, we've got a picture of one of the scenes here. Uh-huh. Um, that was when they went to boot camp. Yes. With... Um, Michael Barrymore, mm -hmm. that probably wouldn't be so usable now. Um, just, you know, just awesome. So they've apparently they've approached a screenwriter to write the new film. Put it together. Um, you mean to tell me it's not their own original work? No, but do you know what? Jerry is the manager now of the Spice Girls. Mm. They've got rid of everybody else, just Jerry. Um, so a source... Sorry, I just got an image of Willie Grit. So just Jack, just Jerry. Just Jerry. <laughs> Um, a source, I don't know who the source would be, has said HP, that surely. the girls have been in talking about how to mark the film's anniversary and are actively considering making a tongue-in-cheek sequel. Was the first one not tongue-in-cheek? <laughs> the first one wasn't exactly a serious film. Tongue-in-ass-cheek. Could be the... Little bit of rimming. <laughs> um, so, that, so they're heading out on tour again in 2022. Um, to mark the 10-year anniversary of their last performance as a five-piece at the Olympics. Okay. Okay. Um, but at the moment, Vicky B has said that she will not take part in that. But 
she's kind of insinuated that she may well take part in the film. Ooh. So on her social media, she's put, has someone got something to tell me? So we've got a picture here of them when they toured as a four-piece last time, which I did go see. Uh-huh. And that's, you know, Vicky, Vicky B just pouting, whatever she does, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I, I think it could be good, this. Or it could be a train wreck. Or it could be horrific. But, but if they do it like they did the first one, it's so bad that it's good. Yeah. It kind of, they need to kind of go down like that spinal tap route. Yes. <laughs> yeah, going, you know, <laughs> grainy black and white. Mel B in a dressing room smoking. Get Jerry away from me. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm all there for that. Yeah. Fingers crossed. And Fingers... there's a whole generation out there don't know what Spinal Tap is, so. No, but they need to look it up. Find out. So, from one musical combo to another kind of... Well, she's not a combo. She's just one. <laughs> <laughs> she's just a single person. A single combo. Just a single one. A pink. Are you a pink fan? I, I, I like the pink. You like the pink? I like the pink. So she has, is just about to release a documentary film called Pink, All I Know So Far. Okay, so, so there's something going to be very big or very small. Well, it's, it's, there, there's the, the photo of, of the kind of pr the, the poster, um, and it follows her during her 2019 Beautiful Trauma Tour. Okay. So it's kind of like one of those documentary following you around backstage type films. She's amazing live. Mm -hmm. she um, she, we've got pictures of her here. I don't know what's growing out of her backside. So yeah, she is a behind the scenes documentary. So she's talking about being a mum of two, um, being a businesswoman, being a performer. It's filmed by the producer of The Greatest Showman. Oh. Because she's a massive fan of The Greatest Showman. She was um, one of the reimagined. Yes, yeah, she was. So and she did, um, she did a, a cover of one of the songs with the daughter, mm. Willow. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that is coming out. So she said, I always wanted to be a rock star and I always dreamed of being a mum. And now I have my family, my team and my fans here with me. It's beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. Now, I, I quite like Pink because she's not your typical kind of PC girly pop star. Kind of says it how she... How she yeah, she, she's very uh, sorry, opinionated and, and isn't afraid of voice. Yeah. So I'm yeah. hoping we get a bit of that, not just, you know, kind of pink eating tofu treats before she steams her vocals and that kind of stuff. <laughs> tofu treats. You know, pop starry. Oh, it was so nice, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I want to see her backhanding a child across the stage, but, you know... A l <laughs> I kind of do now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, when I went to see her, she did that. She did that thing where she was in, in that picture that we've got with that like thing around her and a harness, harness, and yeah. she pinged herself from one side of the the arena to the other side. Mm -hmm. Literally, she was like literally inches away from my face. I could have snatched a weave off. Yeah, if if I'd have been more athletic. And... <laughs> Yeah. And so, brave. <laughs> so, yeah, and brave, yeah. So that's coming out on streaming services. Okay. And there's a live album to go with it. Ooh. Um, with, with, with songs from the tour. Okay. Um, so yay, Pink. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, you look it, yeah. No, I, I am, because she's a good performer. He is. Yeah, she, she puts a lot, she's like, she's like Kylie, but without the glitter cannons. Oh. Very different performers, Mike. Very different performers. No, it's the amount of effort they put in. Yeah. Tell me if I've never seen Kylie flinging herself on a rubber band from one side of the stage to another. Oh, you've... But to be fair, they wouldn't need very much. They would just <laughs> need one of those, like, those, those <laughs> things. Say. The kids have. <laughs> Whee! All the way to the other side. So, lockdown mm. has not been kind to, to any of our waistlines, has it, Mike? Oh, it's been very generous to my waistline. Generous. It's expanded it quite, quite a lot. And celebrities would have you believe that they've spent the entire lockdown doing Pilates and... Joe Wicks. Yeah, lifting tyres and oh. crunches and stuff like that. But it's all lies. I think the, the one person out of all this lockdown that I've truly grown to hate is Joe Wicks. Have you? Yeah, everywhere going, you can get fit too. He's dead oh. perky, isn't he? He's I, dead like... I don't mind the perkiness. I don't. It's, it's the, the whole try and get me exercising at home in front of a TV. No, you want to do that, Joe? You do it. Yeah. But don't, don't invade my screen time. Don't invade my personal space with your judgy eyes through the yeah. screen, no. Anyway, we've got a celebrity who has been quite honest. Okay. Will Smith. All right. And so he has, he has explained oh. why. So this is Will Smith kind of like when he's on top of his game physique-wise in the films. Quite, quite enjoying that, that physique. Are you enjoying that? I think one is from 
I don't know which films they're from, to be fair. Um, so the one on the left, I believe, is from Wild Wild West. Wick, 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 Wild Wild West. Awful movie. <laughs> Um, and the one on the right, I, from my dreams. It's from your dreams? Yeah. I think it's iRobot or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so he has just, he has said that he's in the worst shape of his life and he plans to do something about it. So he's posted a picture on his um, Instagram of his dad bod. Um, so he said, I think I've got out of shape. I think we can all relate. This is what, this is what I am. He said, this body, this body has carried me through an entire pandemic and countless days grazing through the pantry. So he took another photograph of it um, as, to kind of like give him some, some incentive to get his ripped torso back again. So he's going, I love this body, but I want to feel better. No more midnight muffins. Am I going to get in the best shape of my life? I'm irritated by him. Are you? Why? I'd kill for a body like that, his lockdown body. Well, yeah. He's just, got a bit of, he's just put a bit of a paunch on. He's not got ripped abs anymore. No, that's what, that's what happens when you don't go to the gym. No, no, that's not what... This is what happens when <laughs> at the gym. Oh, you God, I think wear... <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens. <laughs> you have to wear a shirt and a T-shirt underneath. Oh, to try and hold okay, everything a girdle, together. A girdle. girdle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, people have kind of like, oh, yeah, you. But other people are kind of thinking it's, it's a bit cynical. They think that there's going to be some sort of like Will Smith fitness video. Probably. Be launched. Um, it's 52. Good for him. Good for him. LL Cool J is 52 and looks much better than Will Smith. Oh, you crack one off to him daily, don't you? I, I would quite happily, yeah. Well, on that delightful note, that's the end of the showbiz news. Well, well, thank you for that, Lee. My topless pictures won't be coming out soon, don't worry. But coming soon, we do have the next of our life lessons. But before that, we have Mike and the Buzz. back to chewing the cud. And now it's time for us to ask the question, what is the difference between Mike and a microwave? Apparently only one browns the meat. Let's go over to Mike and the bus. But microwaves don't brown meat. That's, that's the punchline. Uh... Anyway, I've been having a look through the internet to find some interesting little bits. More interesting than that joke. More interesting than that little joke. Wow. Did you not see the tumbleweed? <laughs> um, and, but it's on, on a similar theme. Oh. Okay. And this is after someone w went to Reddit to ask a question. Now you know what Reddit is. No. It's, it's an open forum. Okay. Okay. Where people ask questions, post pictures and... Right. And... and Plan things. I've that. severed my leg. What should I do? That kind of stuff. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, one one employer basically went to, to Reddit. Um, how to deal with an employee who spends more than a day on the toilet every week? Okay. Um, and this is a story in America. That's a surprise. Um, an employee turns up for work and spends the first twenty minutes in the toilet having a poop. Right, but then repeats the, the same process of going to the toilet and spending 20 minutes three to four times a day. Who are we to judge somebody's digestive system, Mike? So it's going to the toilet, toilet three to four times a day, spending 20 minutes. Yeah. Right, so they've worked out that out of the, the five-day week, he's only working four days. The rest of the time, he's being paid to poop. Paid to poop? Paid to poop. Does he, does he have a digestive issue? Does he not have, like, no. like, an, like IBS or...? No. No, he's just... Spend a lot of time in the toilet. Have they had, a, have they had a, an informal discussion with him? Um, they, they were actually asking Reddit how to deal with someone that, oh. that spends the majority of their time a day. Okay, pooping. In the toilet, apparently having a poop. Is he pooping? He's not actually pooping. Is he doing something Rudy Doody? He's, he's just spending time, he's avoiding work. Oh, okay, he's just sat there. He's just sat there pretending to poo. Okay, I thought you were going to say he's just cracking them off. <laughs> cracking what? Oh, cracking one off from work? Yeah. Oh, people would never do that. It's vile. It's, it's disgusting. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, and I wish you'd stop doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> um, so would, would you ask him what he was doing in the toilet, or would you just let him ask, leave him to it? I think, you know, if the rest of the days mm. he's not disappearing, I'd be kind of like, well, perhaps that's just his day to poop. 
No, no, he's doing it every day. Oh, every day. Every day. So not just one day. No, no, it's not like pooping. it's not like a Monday poops. Right. It's like Monday to Friday. He poops so much. Oh, that it's I'd like be. I'd, you'd have days. to have a word, wouldn't you? A word. You'd have to say. Is there anything that we can do for you? Can we provide you with you a know commode? Some, <laughs> some Sit fiber at your desk. <laughs> to, to bulk you out. I don't know. Um, you know, yeah, you, you'd have to. Um... <laughs> it's <like> a workplace edema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't do solids at work. You see, so it, that doesn't affect me. You don't do solids at work. No, I don't. I would if I needed to do a poopy doop. Uh, I would go. I'd wait until I went home. But what if you so like you so like on your way to work, right? And you had a very strong coffee. Yeah. Right. And so like ten o'clock, you're in work, and you need to go poopy doop. You would then wait all day. No, I'd, I would go to a McDonald's and or a public restroom. They're worse. But, but I, don't, I don't want the humiliation of co-workers hearing me evacuate my bowels. Because <laughs> quite honestly, it does fine. not sound good. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of noises are we talking? Are we talking like the cheering, Titanic or? sinking. <laughs> Screaming, <laughs> splashing. <laughs> People splashing. <laughs> breaking things. A man going around in a lifeboat going, anybody alive? Yeah, sound of, sound of an orchestra just playing it out. <laughs> so no. I think you should do that at work now. <laughs> don't need to anymore because we don't have offices anymore. We don't have offices. So I can just drop trow wherever. <laughs> if anybody sees them at the side of the motorway. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, could, um, I think we should, yes. Because um, we, we all know that you have pet. Oh, I have a pet. You have a pet. I do have a pet. Yes. yes. And what have you called your pet? She's called Nell. Nell. Nelly. Full name of Nelly Robertson. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I thought she was called Nelly Furtado. Yeah, she yeah, it depends. Depends what if she's she good being or, good or not. Yeah, yeah. That's a full name. She knows she's in trouble. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I shout the camp name, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, well, some people have been in got in trouble. Have they? After they've named their cat Richard. Okay. Which I, and I don't know why. Is it because he's got a shape on his nose like a cock? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, um, a couple have, have named their cat Richard, and people have been dismayed because it has the markings of genitals, and they do shorten his name. And if, if you kind of look at him again, mm -hmm. one could almost say that those two, that the markings on his head could be like a bum or a, or a foof. Or a foof. Or boobies. Or boobies. Or boobies. Yeah, he's a dirty cat. He's a dirty cat. <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> he didn't choose the name. No. Cats are <laughs> souls though, aren't they? <laughs> what? Just, just going to put it out there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a cat person myself, but I don't think all cats are. Maybe. They are. All of them are <laughs> holes. Even if the ones that think they're not, they're <laughs> holes. Cats are just <laughs> holes. I'm going to say <laughs> holes one more time. <laughs> And then let's move on. Yes, the um, the cat Richard. Yes, um, the the parents his parents have been slammed for calling him Richard. His parents. Yeah, they're not his parents. They own it. It's not a human. Okay, so you're not Nell's parent. Yes. <laughs> because, that <is> because that is different. Because dogs are better. <laughs> We're going to get complaints again. I don't care. I <laughs> know you don't. That's the, that's the scary thing. <laughs> um, but the, the man who complained about, about them um, quite a lot in the in local press wanted, didn't want to be named. Didn't want to be named. Didn't want to be named. Wanted to be anonymous. So what are they doing? Are they like shouting dick out of the... <laughs> the oh, right. <laughs> dick! Yeah. Looking for dick! Yeah. Dick, where are you? Come in, dick. <laughs> I need dick. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to get in touch, send us something. And no babs from Bromsgrove. We are not doing that with a cucumber and a petty for Lou. Just look for at the Cud TV on your ever present social media platforms. And let's move swiftly on to our story of the week. Now, you like to try and keep young, don't you, Lee? Try. Try. Yeah. Not happening. Lots I'm of bulldog trying. clips at the back of your head to give you that little bit of a, a facelift. You cheeky gap, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giving away your secrets. I know. Yeah. Well, there's a 111 year old Australian man that has his own way of staying young. It's clucking as strange, as this report says. He eats chicken brains. Where can I get them from? So. <laughs> 
butcher shops. Okay. Yeah. And, and how do they make him stay young? That's what he's claiming. He eats chicken brains every day, and that's the reason for his long life, he's saying. When did he start eating chicken brains? When, when in his life did he go, oh, do you know what? I'm looking a bit crepey around the old eye, eye sockets. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, gonna to scoff on a chicken brain. Didn't say when he started to eat chicken brains. Um, but he said, chicken brains, you know, chickens have a head, and in there, there's a brain. And they're delicious little things. Okay. Yeah, and it's only one little bite. Okay. Yeah, so he decided that that's, that's the reason why. You see, the test would be stop him eating chicken brains, mm -hmm. see how long it takes to die. Well, um, as he turned 111, 124 days later he died. Oh, so he gave his secret away. Yep. That's like, that's like um, that vial that you drink out of um, Death Becomes Her. If you tell people, well, you don't die. But <laughs> no, you don't no. die. You just die. <laughs> didn't think that one through. <laughs> no, <laughs> didn't think that one through. Yeah, but um, basically he, he told everybody his secret to a long life and then died shortly after. Perhaps it was a deal with the chickens. And the chicken said, as long as you don't tell anybody, mm. we'll let you eat the brains of the ones that we don't care for. Okay. But if you tell somebody, we will kill you. We will end Until you. So the chickens are killed. Yeah. He kind of was like, I told people, then they all came into his bedroom and suffocated him. <laughs> By sitting on him. Sitting on him, like a nest. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. That went dark. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah. Maybe, he's, he, maybe he was actually a, a collection of zombie chickens in a human suit. <laughs> yeah. Eating the brains of chickens. I don't think I could be asked to live to 111. <laughs> I can't be bothered. I couldn't be bothered. I'd like that on my death certificate. Just gave up. Couldn't be bothered <sighs> anymore. It's a lot of years, that. You can't... I mean, he didn't look particularly good. Well... He looked like a scrotum in glasses. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's a read. <laughs> that is a read. <laughs> <laughs> and also my party trick. <laughs> <laughs> We think about well, other people that got to that sort of age, like the Queen Mum. How old was she when she died? She was at least 103. They do tend to live to an old age. Is it the chicken brains? It might be the chicken brains. Ooh. Or the amount of gin that was consumed. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to eat chicken brains. Are you not? No. Just going to carry on eating chicken. Just chicken. Just general chicken. Not, not chicken brains. Chicken goujons. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's my secret. Goujons. <laughs> <laughs> goujons. <Goujons. laughs> Are, are, you, are you breading them? I am. Oh. I like to put them in a sandwich. Ooh. Oh, chicken. Keeps me young. <laughs> I was going to say, chicken butty. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Living the life, that. <laughs> but yeah, don't eat chicken brains. It's just foul. <laughs> and that's all from the buzz this week. Well, thanks, Mike. I wonder if you can eat chicken testicles. Well, stay tuned, as after this comes our life lesson. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we thrust ourselves into this week's... Life Lessons. Do you care for the birds, Mike? The birds? The little baby birds? The birds with the feathers and the with flying? The flying. Yes, I do. Do I, you? I leave my nuts out for the birds. Do you? I do, yes. They peck at your nuts. They do love my nuts, the How birds. Oh, lovely. Yes. Shall we make a receptacle for those said nuts? For the nuts or for the birds? For the nuts. For the birds to eat. Uh, okay, yeah, let's yeah. do that then. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to attempt to try and assemble mm -hmm. a bird feeder. Oh, oh. Just, not just your average bird feeder, okay. but, a, but a lighthouse, oh. wooden, shaped bird feeder. Oh, that's exciting. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> so, um... In front of you, mm -hmm. you, you should have all the accoutrements to make a, a, a bird egg. I, I have bits, I have yeah. paint, I have brushes. Um, it has come with no instructions. Okay. Just pre-fabricated um, pieces. Oh, it's a prefab. Yeah. Oh, so cool. what we have to do is assemble it uh -huh. and then paint it. Right, okay. For the birds. Okay. Okay. So do you want, what, do you, do you want to have another look at the picture just so you can see? Okay, I, I know pretty much you know, what bird You okay. know, okay. So yeah. yeah. Like so. so yeah, just go, just assemble it however you, you... however I, I desire. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying this is this is a um, a birdhouse? Yeah. Or a bird feeder? A bird, yeah. Which one? Because they're different things. Which bird? No, bird feeder or birdhouse. It says birdhouse. So 
but it's not a bird feeder then. But the, the, but there's feed in the picture. Do you know what this kind of wood's called, Lee? It's called balsa wood. It is. This is bringing back flashbacks to being a child. Is it balsa wood, though? It is balsa wood. Yeah. Is it not plywood? No, this is balsa wood. It's far too light for plywood. How thrilling is this, a discussion this about is... balsa wood? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How mask are we? I was always under the impression that balsa wood was very... You could snap it. You can snap this. But this, this is... This is... Give it a, give, give it a good sales. No, it's quite strong. I want you to snap your bird I'm house. not snapping <laughs> my birdhouse. Um, I don't know how to put the bits together. So this is... This is... This is very quick as a life lesson here, Lee. Well, because I've, I've built myself a birdhouse now. Are you going to paint it, though, Mike? No. No, how, I'll paint how, it. Is it stable? No, is it egg? It's... No. I think if if you're going to put that in your garden, uh -huh. a little bit of glue. Ooh, a little bit of glue. A little bit of glue. Bit of wood, glue. glue. wood glue. Wood glue. Wood glue. Wood <laughs> glue. <laughs> Would you use wood glue because wood glue is soluble? Yeah. Oh, no, I've put this upside down because I've put the air holes at the bottom. Undo it then. I think it goes that way. Do that so, thing. so do you, I mean, did you right. make it? I have a um, a multi-level bird feeder in my garden. A multi-level. Yeah. Do you find that squirrels get it into your bird feeder? They do, but you see, I've moved it. Right. So that the squirrels um, have to travel. And we all know. <laughs> and we all know squirrels hate to travel. Um, they will only ever a comp. <laughs> I've moved it so that they have to travel across open space. Open space. <laughs> um, <laughs> Astronauts. <laughs> yeah. To get to it across the garden because they don't like that because they're exposed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And squirrels hate to be exposed while they're in the, yeah, in the, because, in the nuts. Yeah, because cats could then eat them. Okay. Uh, but they're very greedy, uh, uh, squirrels. They are. I, you see, I just leave out different nuts for the squirrels. Different nuts? Yeah, so I leave out so like season things for the birds in the bird feeder. And then for the squirrels, I, I leave a pile of, of like um, hazelnuts and things. Okay. Do they even care? Yeah, yeah. Because they prefer, prefer more food. So they don't go for the little seeds, they run for the bigger food. Oh, okay. Squirrels are very aggressive. I, I have squirrels in my garden that, that, that quite like my gardens. They, 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 they snarl at each other. Do they? Yeah. Well, I can't do it. You can't do it? I can't do it. Do you want oh, hang on, no. Right, hang on. Do you want my one? Yeah. Tough. <laughs> And, oh, ooh. There you go. I think I might have assembled it. What? Ha oh, tip. Yeah. Before I put it all together, put the string in. Yeah. Got to. You got to thread the string through because otherwise it won't hang. Okay. It doesn't hang. Yeah. Do you have to hang this well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think so. You would have to. From a tree. So you're asking me to make sure it's well hung? Yeah. I've lost the will at this point, to be fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't care what you do. Okay. <laughs> yep, so mine's well hung. Is yours well hung now? I can't get the end in. Would you like a tip? I've got one end through. Oh, for... It's easier if you create a loop. So with it's your string, with, with your string, right? Instead of just trying to force your string through as a single string, if you look at me, look at my, look at boy, right? Fold it over like that, and you get a loop. And it's easy to thread a loop. I've done it easy. now. Right, okay, but it was easy with a loop. What I was saying. <laughs> oh yeah. I've done it now. So shut the <laughs> up. All right. <laughs> Just gonna, <laughs> just gonna tie a little. I still have the back to put on, actually. <laughs> I swear, if 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 I press this down and it all collapses, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn tables and smash <laughs> things. I'm going to laugh. If if it breaks, I will laugh heartily. Because I'm cracking on quite happily here. 
Because you forget that I can I can do handicrafts and things. Oh, I've done it. Yay. Woo! Um, if I hold this up and it drops to pieces <laughs> Right, I'll bet paint it, haven't I? So, yeah. um, looking after one's wildlife uh -huh. is very, very important. It is. Yeah. What what wildlife do you look after, Lee? Um, squirrels. <laughs> Which you just said are aggressive. <laughs> um, I, well, because I have moved our bird feeder, yeah. um, the proper birds, not the... The proper birds. Prop, not the greedy squirrels, uh -huh. and the... Um, Wood wood pigeons. Okay. Oh, wood pigeons. Wood pigeons uh -huh. are very different from ordinary pigeons. Yes, because they're made of wood. Because no, yeah, they're they're nicer. Um, and they don't eat vomit. They don't eat vomit. No. Why are you feeding normal pigeons vomit? Link? Well, normal pigeons eat vomit, don't they? If you've like been walking down the street and you've seen a pigeon eating vomit. No, <laughs> not often. I, what I would suggest uh -huh. um, to the viewers at home, should they, in any sort of extreme situation, make one of these, yeah. um, is before you hang it from a tree or a branch. Apologise to your neighbours. Or a loved one's limb. I would... Get planning um, permission, surely. Would be I would varnish it first. I got, I've, got a spotty, I've got a spotty house. That's very nice. Yeah. Thanks. Um, how, how are you going to make yours better? Have you got a lighter? <laughs> I do, actually, yes. <laughs> Come on. I, hurry up, you. Have you still not paint, finished painting? You, devil's in the detail, Mike. I'm getting quite a Greek vibe from you. Greek vibe, did you yeah, say? Yeah, Greek vibe. So, you know, the blue and white houses. Okay. Oh, you've gone gay with pink and, pink and blue. Oh, yeah. Well, it's quite yeah. nice. What, what have you done? Yours, right. Do you know, yours reminds me of um, a rash I once had. Does yeah. it? Shall we, shall we see what birds think of them? Because I've got a couple yeah, okay, here. Yeah, let's like. get some birds in. Call it a cross. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. Call it a cross, Mike. How do I do that? Ooh. Ooh. Brrr. Come on. Come on. It won't come if you don't. <laughs> Tease it across, come on. Tease it across or it won't come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Maybe. Shall we shall we shall we hold our shall we hold our bird feeders up and see if it attracts the highly realistic birds? Okay. You go first. In the wind. Woo! Bra! Oh. Fits nicely. <laughs> I've been in a place where they've got places like that. Have that you? you? Oh. Yes. I hope real birds have better <laughs> chance of getting in and out of that. Uh, and mine's not really interested. Oh. Well. That was a way to spend 12 minutes. Thanks for that, Lee. That was sincere, honest. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Got just enough time to say find us on your social media platforms. Look for the Could TV and our website is thegood.tv. And while you're there, have a look at our support section for extra content, including outtakes. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.